Hello everybody, welcome to day 24 of the Vita Challenge vlog every day April. And I just got finished probably about, literally about 10 minutes ago, playing through a game I recently got on Steam called Antichamber. A-N-T-I, although the actual word is spelled A-N-T-E, so I'm sure that was deliberate. Um, the best way to describe this game is, imagine Portal as a first-person Metroidvania. So it's it does it's not nearly as linear as Portal, but it's very I mean comparisons to Portal are inevitable. I was the first one to make it, but it's really very it's a different kind of game. It feels like it was based on the Source engine, but it's actually based in the, the Unreal engine. And I really don't know how to describe it beyond that. And you have it set, you have to play through all these different puzzles, but there's no actual there's no defined linear progression to the game. You're pretty much free to solve the puzzles, the puzzles in any order you want. Although certain puzzles, you have to get new abilities in order to solve them. You have to go. You go through the game and you get uh, four different types of uh, different guns, and each one upgrades your upgrades the abilities that the gun is able to do. I. I don't really want to call it a gun, though, because it's just sort of a device. It's a gun in the same sense that the portal gun is a gun. It's not really a gun. It's just it's, it's a device. And it lets you basically manipulate matter. So you can collect matter, and then you can spit it back out into cubes. And the whole thing, every, the whole game is based around cubes. So it's not quite like Minecraft, really, at all, beyond the fact that you have cubes that you can pick up and place down. But the game itself is very trippy thing. I really like the art style in it. It's a very simplistic, uh, very simplistic color scheme, and it uses what it does very well. And if you've ever played around with the Portal 2 uh, SDK, the software development kit, and kind of messed stuff around where you can make hallways that are deeper than they actually are, this game does that a lot. So they'll have spaces that if you ha have like a cube, and you'll view it from multiple sides, but depending on which side you view it from, there will be something completely different inside. So it's almost like dealing with four-dimensional space. Very well done in that sense. It took me about... I'm going to look it up right now. I can actually look up on my Steam. Seven and a half hours logged to the game. And I'm still not even done, because I'm pretty sure you have to beat it within a certain time limit in order to get the proper ending. So I'm going to have to play through this game one more time. Thankfully, once you've solved the puzzles, you kind of know how to do things, but the map in this game is not quite uh, laid out properly. Uh, well, it's not that it's laid, not laid out properly, it's just you're traveling through fourth dimensional space. So you can go through one area and come out of a completely other area, and and it completely, it's seamless. So you'll, you'll be walking, and you'll turn around, and the place that you were is no longer there. It's like stairs now, or it's a wall. Or it'll be turning around and you'll be facing a wall and you turn around and then the area you came to is now a hallway. And it's like, you go, there's a wall, turn around, there's a wall, turn around again, it's a hallway again. It's like, what the fuck happened? So if you like stuff like that, Antichamber is really cool in that sense. It's very, I hate to throw around the word mind-bending, but it's, uh, it's mind-bending is what you I would say it is. So... I think it does the fourth dimensional space even better than something like Portal did, where you, I mean, you go through the portal and you come out the other end, but you're still sort of in the uh, recognizable 3D space. This game, you have no idea where the fuck you're going sometimes. Even if you try to map it, you're going to have to have, like, point A and then jump over to point B. You're going to be jumping around points on the map, and then there's certain parts where, it, depending on if you turn to the left or to the right, you will go to completely different areas. So, I mean, there's a section where you can go down and keep turning to the right, and you'll constantly be going down that same hallway. But as soon as you turn around, then you're going around a different hallway. Or if you turn to the left, then you came went back the way you started. So, it's really, really cool in that sense. I was really enjoying the game. Um, there were a couple of bugs that I ran into, though, which was annoying. A couple of things that are kind of frustrating about this game is there's certain puzzles because right, there's no way to pause the game. If you hit escape, you go back to the main area, which is sort of the hub area where you start the entire game in. 
And it's just like this black room that has all the information, has like your controls. There is no HUD in this game, which is pretty cool. All the information that you have on screen is either contained in your device or it's just, that's it. You can see how many, how much matter you have in your device, but other than that, that's all you have. So that's, that's really nice that they got rid of the HUD, but the, all the options and everything, it's done through the first person. So you kind of in this cube-like room and you turn around and it's like, okay, I want to turn my mouse on. So you just go that and you hit click and it turns the mouse sensitivity up. I had to turn the mouse sensitivity up to the highest because the it's really low in this game because I, I I'm just used to a higher mouse sensitivity. But one thing that does bug me is, of course, every time you hit you esca hit escape, you go back out to this room. The only way to get back to where you started is to go to the map and select the area you were just in. Unfortunately, all the areas really kind of look alike because it's a very monochrome color scheme. There's usually it's just white and black and maybe one color at a time. They sometimes have a couple of different colors, but mostly it's just white, black, and one color. It, it does okay in that sense, where it, they kind of differentiate different things, but it's a very minimalistic type of game. But one problem I had was the only way to get back to an area is to go through the map, and that'll send you back to an area completely reset. But there's certain times that you can only solve a puzzle if you go, if you warp to an area that's adjacent to it, so you can collect matter. So that's annoying. And another bug that almost, I almost rage quit over this, but I powered through it. I was really close to, like, fuck it, but, um, there's a certain trick you can do. If you don't want to know any tricks, um, skip ahead in the video. But there's a certain trick you can do with the jump pads, where you drop down and you place a block of matter, and that'll stop the jump pad from pushing you back up. Then you jump again, push another block of matter, and it'll and it'll stop in its track, and then you keep doing that until you get down to the floor. Unfortunately, twice in a row, I was jumping down and I placed the matter, and the lift pushed up through the matter, and it it pushed up through the block of matter, and now the block of matter is trapped below the lift, and I can't get the lift to go down any further. So I had to reset, go back out to the hub area, and start again. And it was a very long section without any checkpoints. So I had to restart the entire section, it was about 10 minutes long, I had to play through that again. And then, as soon as I got to the lift, it happened one more time. I, I placed the, the block of matter and pushed the lift down and it went up through the block of matter. And now I, I can't get down that way, because that's the way you have to go. You have to do that trick with the lift in order to get through. But it didn't, it, it happened again, so I had to play through a third time. Finally, I'm doing really fucking fast at it. I'm able to get through the area in about, oh, about, about five minutes instead of, like, 30 that it took me before. Because, like, the first time through this game, yeah, I played this game for seven and a half hours. This game is... You will have to figure out how you're going to solve these puzzles. Don't go online for any walkthroughs. I got through without any, any trouble. Um, mostly the fact that if you're having trouble, you probably have to find a power-up to your item first. So try searching areas that you haven't found that you haven't been searching before. Try searching them in a different way if that's um, if that helps you at all. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Antichamber. Really cool uh, sort of an indie puzzle first person game. Um, somewhat in the vein of Portal. Comparisons to Portal are inexcusable, but Portal's a great game, and Antichamber is really fun too. So that was my thoughts for day twenty four. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care.